who was, you know, uh, sending us the data, telling us, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow between uh, 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock, uh, between 300 meter altitude and 500 meters, uh, weather will be like this or, or like that. And sometimes, you know, there were some mistakes and <laughs> uh, errors in, uh, in the forecast, and uh, hence the kind of storms we ended up in. Um, the, the best part for me was the, uh, uh, the, you know, all the wildlife thing. I actually had never seen a uh, penguin except mm -hmm. in a zoo. So, you know, <laughs> on the St. Andrews Bay, you have 200,000 of them. So it's, and it was not even high season. So it's, uh, Is it loud? It's, uh, it's, um, it, it's not that much that it's loud, it's that it's uh, monotonous and uh, it's you know, always the same. I mean, Im imagine a chicken and a uh, and, uh, and group and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 200,000 chicken doing it. not cute but not so pleasant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the eggs are not as good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Before we go more into the scientific purpose, uh, can you draw us some kind of comparison from your own experience between North Pole and South Pole in terms of landscape, in terms of nature? Um, yeah. How would you summarize the difference for people who never went there? Yeah, well, the, I mean, as most of you know, I'm sure the Arctic is basically a frozen ocean and there is no landmass there except all around Alaska, Russia, Greenland, and all that, as opposed to Antarctica, which is a continent with ice on, ice on top. Um, and I got the chance to actually go to Antarctica, the continent, in 2003, climbing the highest peak there, which is uh, at 16,000 feet, Mount, uh, Mount Vincent. And that that's just extraordinary, I mean, in terms of remoteness, uh, uh, otherness, uh, magical landscapes, it's uh, unbeatable. If you have a chance to go to actual Antarctica as a continent, it's, it's just incredible. Uh, North Pole um, is, uh, uh, North Pole and, and the Arctic, the ice part, not the coast, uh, is uh, you know it's very monotonous. It's uh, basically frozen ice. Uh, sometimes you have uh, you know a compression and a little crest of uh, ice, but it's uh, very monotonous. It's uh, it's always humid. You are at sea level, so it's uh, it's not very pleasant, even though it's uh, it's beautiful. I I have a more of a taste for Antarctica and around Antarctica in terms of. Uh, Majesty of the landscape, although the Arctic is uh, fantastic as well. And one thing you have in the Arctic that you do not have in Antarctica is uh, the people. I mean, you have natives uh, all around uh, the Arctic. Uh, you know, the uh, Inuits and Greenland and uh, and Nenets and and others in uh, in Russia and all that. So you, you get to have a sense of how they live in these countries when in the Antarctica. Only people there are uh, scientists, you know, about a thousand scientists at a given point in time. And they are uh, you know, nicely uh, set in their uh, warm uh, uh, barracks or tents, and uh, it's uh, different. <laughs> okay. uh, you've been doing this to the poles for many, many years. Uh, which, was the f which year was the, your first experience in the North or South Pole, by the way? Oh, uh, the, well, uh, the first uh, real polar experience was uh, Antarctica in 2003. I had been in, you know, uh, Himalayas and other regions, uh, Glacier, but the actual uh, Antarctic was 2003, so about 13 years ago. Okay, so in 13 years, uh, what did you witness in terms of global warming consequences? Uh, and what did you discover this time uh, about that? Uh, yeah, it's an uh, interesting question, and the, I mean, one, whether myself or anybody here or the best scientists in the world, you, you're not going to get any 
anything from just one visit or you know one data point, uh, you need to put that in perspective over many, many years. Um, but to give you an example, uh, when I was in uh, Greenland in 2007, I was with a bird scientist. Um, and you know, uh, see these birds, and they are doing their things, and eating insects, and laying eggs, and you know, I, I, I cannot say anything about them, uh, and about what it means for climate, uh, and the scientists cannot either, but they had been there 20 years in a row, same place, studying the same birds, who we were putting uh, satellite trackers on the birds to follow their migration routes, and if you put 20 years of data, you know, uh, on the chart, that's where you see uh, changes. Uh, for example, when I was there, which is already 2007, yeah, 2007, uh, in 10 years, uh, so let's say 97 to 2007, uh, insects uh, flies were coming 30 days earlier appearing 30 days earlier in these yes, East Coast villages where we were. So birds which, you know, migrate to Africa or these regions, they come back sooner because they know they're going to have, you know, food sooner. And, you know, it's gradual, but that's what uh, happens. And then the birds which uh, need uh, more uh, cold, like the ivory gulls there, well, they move north and north and north until you know, there won't be any uh, coldness or, or anything to, to eat there, and this particular species might, uh, might disappear. Uh, I mean, we hear, you know, often that, uh, now more often I should say that maybe someday some birds will not migrate anymore because it's going to be warm enough where they are and there is going to be enough food where they are in, in, in the first place. So that's uh, kind of things. In, um, in the expedition here, um, may I remember uh, when we walk along the beach uh, at the end of the uh, crossing of San Georgia before we reach uh, Stromness, which was a well station that Shackleton reached after his uh, own crossing, we were on, you know, we see it's green and almost slush. And, uh, uh, when Shackleton did it a hundred years ago, um, the, it was a glacier. The glacier was going all the way to the sea. That particular glacier on Fortuna Bay is about not two miles uh, retreated. Uh, in 2008, some scientists uh, did a uh, study of a hundred and, well, there, there are about 160 glaciers in, uh, on South Georgia. Uh, they studied 36 of them. And they found that 28 have been retreating, six are about stable, and only two are advancing. So you can see the vast majority are, are retreating. But again, all this is always in context of you know, time and other data points. Uh, otherwise, you cannot say, oh, you know, it's warm today, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Any results yet since you came back uh, for your two scientists for the snow? Uh, collections and the atmospheric particles, or even for the for the uh, uh, courant uh, around uh, around Antarctica. Uh, yes, well, there are some results were almost immediate because the uh, eleven uh, floats that we dropped collectively dropped in uh, in the ocean uh, started to emit data immediately. So these are part of a network of uh, 3,500 uh, flows in uh, all the oceans in the world. Mm -hmm. So we added, uh, you know, points to a system. But in a region, it's only 11 flows out of uh, 3,500. But in a region where there were almost none, so immediately scientists, wherever they are, it's an open open source, uh, you know, mm -hmm. system called Argo, can go and get the data and see how. Uh, floats evolve, the current evolves, uh, how the eddies uh, work in these regions and all that. So yes, there are uh, uh, already some, uh, some uh, results. Uh, uh, on the um, uh, snow collection and the floats, we expect, you know, if not a paper, hopefully a paper, a scientific paper, but at least some 
communication probably uh, first part of next year. Oh, great. You know, as, as the scientists say, it always takes, takes time sure. to produce something. Yeah. On the, uh, and, and these were planned, but the uh, unexpected was the iceberg that we saw, the uh, huge iceberg, uh, 12 miles by 6 miles, just a huge thing. So the um, scientist I approached, uh, one at uh, Ifremer in Brest, and the other one at the uh, University of uh, Utah, um, uh, decided to use that particular iceberg, named the B-17A, uh, and uh, studied from its origins in the year 2000 at the, at the bottom of uh, Antarctica to, you know, 2000. 10, 11, 13, and the last uh, bit of a travel that it did, uh, you know, partly, uh, partly with us. That iceberg that you saw, uh, by the way, is uh, now probably almost entirely gone and uh, melted. Uh, when we saw it uh, uh, October 20th, just south of uh, South Georgia, uh, uh, February 5th, that was October 5th, uh, 14, in uh, February it got stuck just uh, south of uh, South Georgia in the, uh, you know, on the continental shelf, about 200 feet uh, deep, and got stuck for a while, then the current still pushed it around, and uh, in April it was already in pieces uh, above South Georgia, uh, 